Now, what do you do with companies that just haven't done the digitization yet? How do you get them up going with that transformation effort? Uh, that's I mean, why I think uh, Splunk has had a really successful growth curve is we started way back where digital is native with yep. those core tech teams. Um, and how we've helped accelerate digitization within some of these organizations is to make sure that I've got both resilient systems and secure systems. I'm gathering that data from even sparse digital signals. Most organizations have moved to some type of front end system to at least trap sales rep activity, uh, maybe customer support activity. When you begin to tie in those processes um, with the more static data sources that would indicate customer ID and product ID, you start to bring to life what's happening on a more near real time basis across the company, which begins to create that virtuous cycle and circle of, wow, I'm getting some really impactful business value. What else can I digitize? How do I accelerate this? Um, and and we're, we're seeing that happen at really rapid scale across traditional organizations. And then of course, the next gen online organization um, we are really ideally suited for. You know, that's a great point, right? As companies digitize, what they're doing is they're building digital feedback loops. And every time you take an action, that action actually helps inform the back end, in the machine learning on the back end, the knowledge and the neural networks on the back end to say, hey, let's go test out some things, right? Yeah. This is almost like choose your own venture books. Remember those? I do. Yeah, we start out, you like, oh, you start with this question, you know, page five, make a choice, you could be on page 38, yeah. you come back, right? And that's those feedback loops are actually the core of these digital, um, these all these new digital companies. They are. It's, in, it's funny because you've been talking about this for again a decade, and we've had so many conversations about uh, the how we accelerate digitization and the benefits it brings to organizations. If you really have a uh, unlimited set of potential dimensions or surfaces of investigation across the day-to-day -day business landscape, and this this allows every product company to become a services company, every services company to become an experience company, and every experience company to start looking about outcomes. So this is kind of exciting. It's we we are really really excited here at Splunk. And and again, the way that we're trying to craft this portfolio is it is not Splunk. It is Splunk and. Every one of these organizations has hundreds to thousands of different vendors, hardware, software, different cloud providers. And our orientation is how do we weave Splunk through that landscape so you can leverage those investments that you've made and bring those to life to help accelerate this path to much more of a sense and respond, constant feedback loop, ML driven, next gen customer service that, that we all want. So you start with the fabric, that's the democratization layer. Um, when people start thinking about what you do with that data and where that gets put into a process, a journey, an experience, that's where you rely on partners. Now, who are some partners that you work with closely that you really enjoy working with? We've got a, a really nice uh, whole set of partners from Global Systems Integrators, uh, Accenture at the, the pinnacle of that. Um, we'll be talking a little bit more in our data tenor, 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 I don't want to spoil the surprise. launch about so. the work that Accenture's been doing, yep. but, but there, there is, it's a global world and there's so many different systems integration firms out there. Um, we, we've got really effective partnerships with all the usual top tier Technology organizations. Technology vendors. Um, on the on the systems integrator piece, we're getting much more effective on the technology piece. We just announced a partnership with Cisco where they're using Splunk as the underlying engine to power their next-gen digital offerings. Um, and their first one already is online and is part of the Cisco global price list. Oh, yeah. um, we are uh, continuing to lean in with much more um, OEM-ish type activity. CrowdStrike is an example that's been in the news a lot lately because they're very successful. They're doing IBM. a great job, yep. Um, they use Splunk at the heart of their service to make sure that the endpoint protection that they're, they're driving within their customer base is done effectively. Um, so there's no way that we will be effective both in our core markets, much less the more line of business centric markets without a strong ecosystem of people that are leaning in and, and in understanding and embracing that data to everything message. So you're basically the Switzerland of data is where you're trying to go. That is absolutely, we have been so far, we want to continue to, to, to be that Switzerland of data. That data that makes sense to go through our index, which is much more that non-schematized investigative store, Absolutely, we want everyone to put data in there and we're doing a lot with pricing to make that an easy answer for organizations going forward. But every data repository is built for a different use case. And when we thought through our portfolio from bringing high value to streaming data, data in motion, all the way through to attacking data in multiple different data stores, our orientation was to work with what, the, what different organizations are using within the landscape and not to try and make it a, you must use these Splunk components 
Uh, otherwise, the end-to-end -end solution won't work for you. Oh, this is wonderful. This is uh, the ability to actually take that data, apply it, put it into action. This is what you're talking about for data to everything. Data to everything. Awesome. So we talked about digital transformation in 2009, and there's been a lot of challenges and opportunities. <laughs> I was talking 10 years ago, right? Think about this. It's gone by fast. Very We're fast. now ready because the data is there. What are some of the biggest challenges and opportunities you're seeing with your clients? It's it, going back to that 2009 orientation. Um, certainly the technology has progressed pretty remarkably. Public cloud was early, 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 and um, the integrity of a lot of the new sources of data was not quite there and the cost factor. But I think the biggest equation that I've seen, and you consult all the time, is people are slow to change. Um, the, the art of the possible affects a few, but it takes you know, others of us more time to really digest what that means. Um, and then we're all organized in these silos. And then our view is filtered by our direct team and the data that our direct team has. And I th think the power of data to everything and the power of digital transformation, as we talked about from the very beginning, is blowing up those lines. Data is flowing everywhere. Most of it is dark, most of it is untapped. Yeah. Data sits in hundreds to thousands of data lakes, puddles, ponds within organizations. Most of it is not joined and not used in a way. There's so many answers out there, but it takes people to want to drive those answers. And you don't have to wait for all the train tracks to be laid to get the value. You can get it with the data that you have within your organization today. So you're taking, take a human-centric approach to this data and this digital transformation. Yes. Okay, makes a lot of sense. Move the humans, move the humans forward. Helped our viewers for years to explain the concept of why big data is so compelling. It is one of, not just with one of, I say, because you also do great security stuff, but one of the chief attractions of Splunk. And people are saying, why does anyone care about big data this much? So I'm going to give you the floor to explain why a Splunk, but of course a Snowflake, is so popular. It's, uh, yeah, as you called out so early, Jim, on these cloud kings, I think you probably got the opportunity to talk about the data or big data kings coming uh, up as well. Um, yeah, we are lucky enough, uh, like Snowflake and others, uh, and by the way, we're a customer of Snowflake. We love using their products. They're a wonderful data warehouse that complements what Splunk does uh, on more uh, real-time, time series streaming data and, and very complex big data. Um, but everything in the world, as we've talked about, has got a sensor attached to it now. And almost everything has got some type of Wi-Fi or network connection. And there is a ton of data, literally tons of data that is flying around the stratosphere around us at a given moment. The difficulty is being able to capture that data and then begin to make sense of it so that you can serve customers more effectively. You can reduce costs. You can optimize your supply chain. You can hear signals from your employee base. All the different capabilities that if you understand big data and cloud certainly helps dramatically there, you can actually drive society forward uh, at Splunk, we call it turning data into action, uh, bringing data to every question, every decision, and ultimately every action uh, so that we can keep our organizations and society moving forward. Okay, so Doug, is there a limit though? I mean, it, it, it won't, I mean, there's so many companies that look and sound like each other, uh, and, and we know that data is very important. We're, you know that we were close to dominoes, and there's a great video. Uh, on your site about Domino's and how it's and how great you are important to a technology company that happens to sell pizza. But at a certain point, will everybody have someone who defines data and looks through data and sits through data and splunks through data and we won't need any more of these companies? Um, I, I think that uh, the first trend, absolutely. I think every company is going to need a data czar, a data leader, a chief data officer uh, over time. Their whole point of digitization a number of points. One of the big points of digitization is you now get a, a bunch of data you didn't have before so that you can actually begin to act in near real time on all these different signals. That needs somebody that understands data and guides data across an organization. The, the, that, that pull from corporations is what pulls companies like Splunk and others forward to help the, the, the technical population within those organizations actually make sense of data for the marketing department, the sales department, the HR department, the finance department, um, people that are leaning much more heavily on data gathering, data science, and making sense of data.